Here, Lourdes Valverde now from the Museum of Native American History. Now we are celebrating Day of the Dead, and uh, it's an important celebration in Mexico. Then, uh, Mexico is a country full of celebrations, uh, full of color and beauty. And one of the most important is this one, is the Day of the Dead. But how much do we know about that celebration? Everybody well know that there is altars, there is uh, customs, there is schools, but since when we celebrate this, this um, festival? Well, this day before the Spain go to Mexico. It's maybe 3,000 years ago that this celebration is, is done. Um, well, but how did it start? Well, was with the Mesoamerican people that celebrated that. But no, it was not only one celebration. We have maybe more than seven celebrations for the dead. But the most important, of course, in the seventh month in the calendar Aztec. And then what time is this? It's maybe in August, August, September, because they celebrate during one month and a half. And then uh, when the Spaniel come, come to, uh, go to Mexico, this fix with the celebration of all the saints. And then they choose the November 1st and 2nd to match with the celebration and do it together. But well, we are here to talk about the history of this celebration. First, the most important is to know the celebration of Day of the Dead for the Aztecs don't have a religious meaning. Uh, I mean, uh, we don't judge the people because their behavior. Uh, they don't see if they were uh, a bad person or a good bad person. We don't have a hell or haven. We have only places to go after death. And then who they choose the place? Well, there was four places to go after death. And to choose that, history, that, that place is depending on how they did. Uh, for example, we have the Omejocan. That is one of the places they, they, they go, the Omejocan. And that was uh, like a paradise. It's a place where the warriors go in, in a battle. If they dead in a, in a war, they go to the Mayocan. And then the woman that died when, uh, when she is given a beard, uh, they go over there because they were considered like a warriors. And then this place is, uh, is one of the most beautiful beautiful places to go after that. And then we have another place, is the Tlalocan, is where is the god of the, of the rain, of the water. And then here go the people that die uh, because, because some cows of the water, a hillness, or for a storm, or in the sea, or is they die for some illness that concerned to the water? Like, let me, let me tell you, because I, I, hydropecia, uh, goat, or boats, that kind of disease go to that place, the Tlalocan. And because this is um, a place where the god of the, of the rain live, the body is not born. The other places, they, they born the body, but not for this. Respecting this God. And then, well, uh, this place is uh, always like in spring with many flowers, uh, 
like an, another paradise, but always was uh, warm and uh, a beautiful. And then we have the, the Mictlan. That place is for the people that die for natural causes. But the Mictlan was uh, the hardest place to get. The people that die in this way, like a normal die, um, they need to travel for nine, nine places to cross nine, uh, nine levels to get a piece and to rest or disappear. And then what was that places? In the first place was to cross a river, very caudalous, with the help of a little dog. Uh, the specific dog is a solo squinkly. And not only that, you need a solo squinkly in the brown color. Not a black one, not a white one. It's, it's like a, in the middle. That color help uh, the people to cross that river. And then after that, they cross a place where it's two mountains uh, open and closet, open and, open and closet. And the soul need to cross that place after the river. And then they need to scale another mountain with many uh, sharpest stuff that could all, all the meat in the body to Peel it, all the all the skin, all, all the meat in the in the body, and then they cross another step, where it's a windy that that was like a like knives, cutting more 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 of the body, and letting the the body only in bonds, and then cross another place uh, where it's uh, arrows that shoot it to the body. That arrow was the shoot it, lost it in battles. And then all that of that arrow go to the body to finish to kill it. <laughs> and then the other step is in uh, a place where a howard eat the heart of the, of the soul. And then after this, there is again the same river, but in the end of the, the way, and you need again the, the little dog to cross. You need to go over the dog, and the dog cross the river, and then you get a McClan. And then when you arrive at that place, this way uh, is during four years, and then uh, after that four years, they get a piece, and they rest or disappear. And uh, uh, in, in the time that the, the Aztec put the altars, they put it in four years to help that soul to get the plan. If this uh, uh, have sense, uh, the people the, the custom of to put the, the altars start over there, to put for four years, and they put all the favorite things and things that help the soul to get a meat plan. Like uh, sometimes they put jewelry to give the heart instead of the head uh, of the heart, and then they can. Uh, take that jewelry and let it pass. And that is uh, one of the, the things that they put in the altars. The little dog, they kill the dog when the person died, kill the dog, put it in, in the place where they put the body to help them to cross the river that I told you in the beginning. And well, that was for to get the McClan. And then there is another place to go when, when the people died. And this place is the Chichihuacuauco. What is this place? It's for the kids that die when they born, or if they were so young, they go 
that place. What was in that place is a big tree, and in the in the bronze they uh, give milk to feed that little kids. It's like a place where the kids wait for the finish of the work, and then they will be reborn and populate again the world. And uh, well, this is the way that the Aztec um, take the, the death uh, in their lives. They celebrate the day because they, they told that it's most important what you, where you go after death and not before. They don't care about your behavior before. It's, it's only after and how you die is how they honor them. And then for the first place, the Mayokan, uh, they have a place in the, in the middle of the pyramids, if, if you know the pyramids in Mexico, uh, they put it in the middle of that place and they reborn in the form of a wonderful uh, beard. And they go, go with them in the born of the sun and in the dead of the sun. Every day they reborn in form of a beautiful uh, beard. And that's it. With the time, we changed everything. With the Spaniel in Mexico, we made it with another meaning, more religious. It's, well, that happened, the time come. Uh, we, we have a, a mix of cultures, and then this have another meaning. It's when we transform the altar from nine levels to three levels, or two levels, the air and the heaven. And this is, uh, you know, they put saints, they put the cross in the altars, they put the image of the um, uh, purgatory people to help them to go out of there. And uh, uh, they pride for the, for the people that die. Um, and uh, well, this is part of our story. And now here in the United States, many Mexican uh, celebrate this day. They maybe don't know everything about the celebration, but it's part of us. And then they put some pumpkins that is used for Halloween, but it's, it's not part of the altar, but it's valued. Everything changed. We are in another country. We need to make our arrangements. And then that's it. The altar can change with the time, but this is a history and you know now. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye, see you next time. Thank you. kids, welcome to the Museum of Native American History. I'm Tiny Tusker, and I have a story to share with you. It's one of my favorites. Are you ready? Great, because it's story time. 
Hola, ¿cómo están? Les saluda Lourdes Valverde dentro del Museo de Historia Nativoamericana en Bentonville, Arkansas. El día de hoy vamos a leer un libro acerca del Día de Muertos que se llama Día de los Muertos, escrito por Rosanine Greenfield e ilustrado por Carlos Ballesteros. Y comienza así. Día de Muertos. Es Día de Muertos y el sol está bajando. Los niños se preparan en cada ciudad y pueblo. Por hoy, honraremos nuestros, um, nuestros parientes que se nos adelantaron con celebraciones. Es tiempo de comenzar. En casa, adornamos nuestros altares con cuidado. Están llenos de recuerdos y buenas cosas para compartir. Algunas, dul algunas calaveras dulces ¿eh? con azúcar blanca que nos dan algunas sonrisas dientudas, pero no nos asustan. Una fotografía en blanco y negro de nuestro abuelo Padilla, quien está montando un caballo, justo como Pancho Villa. Y juguetes para recordar a los más pequeños, un tren y una muñeca, que eran sus favoritos. Entonces, vamos al cementerio. Tomamos ofrendas y... Um, algunos manteles coloridos y hacemos meriendas. Cargamos incienso y velas para enseñar y guiar a, las, a los espíritus regresar a su viaje de cada año. Y quemamos caléndulas uh, brillosas con color del sol y, y velas amarillas. Hacemos un camino de pétalos que nos ayudan para guiar a nuestros espíritus. También traemos almohadas y algunas cobijas para descansar. Arriba colgamos algún papel picado que nos da una leve brisa como un, um, como un arco iris pintado. También tenemos algunos papeles picados con algunas formas de esqueletos montando bicicletas. Nosotros compartimos la comida con nuestros, nuestros seres queridos para comer fruta fresca y tamales. Es un, es un día festivo. Y también están las ollas con comida que trajo nuestra abuela con pollo fresco, eh, también hay atole, chocolate y muchas cosas para compartir. Pero lo más favorito de todos es el pan de azúcar, llamado pan de muerto, con huesos de la cabeza. Esto ofrece a nuestros viajantes a mucha necesidad de comida, de snack, para poder ayudarlos a regresar de nuevo. Entonces, después de la comida, viene nuestra parte favorita, la que más nos gusta, poniéndonos maquillaje en la cara, nos vestimos como un fantasma, Um, con velas y disfraces para reunirnos en un desfile a través de los huesos. Nadie está asustado. Gilberto tiene una cicatriz y una corona especial. Anabel luce como una real llorona. Joaquín Trae una barba blanca que, que llega hasta el piso. Y mientras Luz se parece a alguien a que todo mundo hemos visto alguna vez. Y 
Y justo como las nubes de flores termina el día con, con bailables, músicos que tocan, ellos visten un, un vestido especial que hace ruidos con estas cosas, clickety clack, para despertar a los espíritus y llamándolos a que regresen. El fuego de las, eh, de las velas se está quemando. Nuestras sonrisas son brillosas. Nuestros ancestros saben que nosotros estamos aquí esta noche para ellos. Ellos regresan a su mundo sin tristeza o miedos. Saben que ellos están en nuestros corazones hasta el próximo año. Y este es el fin. Hasta luego. This is Lourdes Valverde from the Museum of Native American History. Today, we will make an altar for you to make it in your house. Uh, we will see this step by step and you will know how to do it. It will be simple, something that you can do with the stuff that you have in your house. Now, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the altars. Uh, this can be in, uh, with different levels. There are altars with two levels. That means the earth and the haven. There are altars with three levels. is the earth, the purgatory, and the haven. And there is uh, another two levels. is uh, with seven levels. That means the seven sins. Uh, that the church have uh, in, in, in the rules. And then there is the Aztec altar that have nine levels. That means the level that uh, the people pass away need to cross to get the peace for their soul. Well, now we will do the, the most simple for you. This is an altar with two levels the earth and the heaven. How to do it? You can choose whatever table that you have in your house, put that cover cloth, the black color is the best for it, and, uh, and then, uh, look, it's a simple table. Oh, as you can see, it's a simple table. And this is a box that we cover with another cover cloth. I can show you is whatever whatever box that you have in your house. You see, I choose this and I cover with the cloth, the cover cloth, and we have our two levels. Let me put it. And then we have the base for the altar. Perfect. <clears throat> the principal stuff. And then after this, uh, we put some, some stuff for the base, the little clots. Yes. 
Thank you, Connie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we will put it here for decoration to, to make it beautiful altar. And then we will start with the principal elements in the altar that have a meaning for this stuff. We will start with the salt. The salt means uh, purification. And then we need the salt for the salt. When come to this, this uh, word of the life, and they can purify their soul. OK, this work. And then we put a little of salt. Oh my goodness. OK, we don't, we don't need an, uh, too much. Only to put this. Thank you, Connie. Take this. And we put it here. You see, it's the salt over there. You can to put it in, in a little plate or whatever you have in your house, you can put the salt. And then the second, a water. The water is, is the same. <clears throat> it's purification, men's purification in a glass or this one. We have this one here, then we use it. <clears throat> the water is for purification and for the thirst of the loved one that is coming from too far, and then he will be thirsty, and the water is for, for them. OK, the third element is the candles. This illuminate the, the way for the, for the soul to find the place that they need. You can use these little ones. It's, it's to chip, to buy in whatever place in, in a supermarket. This is uh, very convenient because it's not real. And then uh, we avoid the, the danger of fire. <laughs> and then you, you can put batteries. And if more, if there are kids in house, you avoid that danger. And then you put it here. Traditionally, you put one candle for one person in your altar. If you have several photographs for honor your, your uh, loved ones, you can one for each of them. But uh, this is uh, like you want. If you want to put more, it's OK. Don't matter. Let me put this here. Only try to look pretty. <laughs> Maybe this to here. OK, perfect. It's the light for the souls to come to this work with us for one day. OK, then the next is the simple sushi flower. Um, maybe you can to find this kind of flowers, but it's something so similar that that is a marigold flower. You can find it here, wherever you want, wherever you uh, go. <coughs> and uh, well, we, we have some flowers. And what is, for what is the flowers? Is for this, uh, what this kind of flower is because the Sempa Sushi flower, uh, it made a smell so, so strong. And then it's the same, it's for to guide the, the souls to come back with us. Traditionally, you can make uh, a pot in your house with the petals of the flowers uh, since the, the door to the altar. And then the soul can see what is the pad uh, to the altar, to their altar. Then we can distribute this to put it here. Uh, do you have more flowers, please? This looks like the Sempa Social flowers. Here, more flowers is the best. You have many flowers, better. Okay. 
Okay. Perfect. We have the flowers. Let's see. Okay. Now, um, we have the copal and the incense is um, for purification. This is the copal, and you can find it maybe in in a store for herbs. <clears throat> and um, well, this is the smell that guy again that the soul for. Uh, to to get the altar, and uh, well, traditionally you can to put in fire, but <laughs> now we will avoid that. And uh, let me put it here. You can put it in a in a plate or only like this. It's fine. Uh, and then there is a very traditional bread for these days. It's called it pan de muerto, and represent the schools of the, of the people dead. And then, uh, well, we, <laughs> we forgot the, the bread, the traditional bread, but it's so similar to this. It's in a room that represent the school, and then have a little bump here, the traditional bread, that, that, um, that signifies is the bones and have four here, and this is the same. And then we have the traditional red, where we put it here. Okay, that look fine. <clears throat> and um, now the papel picado is the decoration that you can see here. We put it before because don't to spend too much uh, time to put it in, but we will put this here to decorate it. And well, this would be one of the elements that we need to put in the altar that represents the, um, the gods. And this is the god of the wine. We, we have to, to have the wine, the water, the fire, and the air. And then we have the fire, the air, the wind, uh, the fire, the wind, the water, and the air is represented by the fruits that we will put in our altar. And then we will put some fruits here. You can put whatever, whatever you want uh, for fruits. This represent the air. Thank you, Connie. Mm -hmm. Got it. And we will distribute here. Let me see. So here, perfect, and some maybe here. Perfect. We have the fruit, and then another element, the most important, the photograph of the people that you want to honor is in this case, well, we are in this beautiful place, we will use a photograph of one of the doctors, Native Americans. This is Hostin Kla. Clay. Well, <laughs> my English is not good, but the name is Hostin Kla. Kla. Well, was a very important uh, doctor in, in his time, and then we will honor this time uh, for this example of altar. And then for this person, we need elements that he used in life. And then one of them was the arrows, and we need to put it here. And then uh, wine is another element, like a doctor. Uh, and some food that he can enjoy when he visits us. And well, <coughs> in this case, we, we bring some 
tamales because it's traditional in Mexico, but need to be the food that the person that you will honor to put the favorite food for, for them, okay? This is only an example, but it's food that they will uh, enjoy when they visit us, okay? And then, this is um, the traditional altar, but with that time, this change. Uh, when the Spain come to, well, go to Mexico, uh, add some religious uh, meanings for this, for this. They want to remove all of this. They couldn't because this is so strong for us, for the Mexicans. And then they only mix the cultures and add some religious meaning at this altar. And um, we bring some saints. You can put <coughs> religious imagines like this. If you want, this is an option over you. Or you can't, it's not necessary. But in this way, in the religion way, you can do it. And another thing that with the time is added, was added, is that the schools, with, uh, sugar schools, and this decorate is uh, like a candy that all in Mexico we use the famous uh, sugar school. It's so pretty. And uh, this is remembering the dead. And uh, we have a uh, Okay, I'll wait. Okay. And we have another, another uh, element that is used in the, in the Aztec altars. It's a little dog. It's the solo squinkly. If you saw the, the movie Coco, you saw this little dog. It's so similar, but <laughs> not the same. But what is the meaning of this? is for to cross the levels in, uh, in the, to go to the Mictlan, that was a place where all the, all the souls go. You need a little dog, a special dog, no whatever dog, is the solo squinkly. And this dog helped the soul to cross a river to the other side, to pad one step in the way for to get the peace. And then if you don't have a dog, <laughs> you, you can to get the peace, okay? Um, and normally, they kill a dog to put in, in, their, in their tomb to, to help him, and many stuff over there to, to help the soul to get the peace. And then we will put it here, because they need, they need to, do, to help help him. <laughs> um, well, speaking a little bit about the steps in the, in the altar, well, this is part of it. Maybe we will speak a little bit more in other video. But now uh, we have only to add some decoration that is added with the time. Uh, well, you know, people, this is La Catrina. This is created by Jose Guadalupe Posada. It's uh, now so common to find it in the altars in Mexico. So popular. And um, the, the artist that make, make her famous was Diego Rivera. And some people believe that he's the creator, but the creator was um, Jose Guadalupe Posada. And it's, now it's important because everybody uses it in, in the parades, in the altars, in the festivities for Day of the Dead. The people paint their face with the school, you know? Uh, but in the beginning was not an element in the altar. Well, my friends, we're finished with this. I hope you enjoy this uh, little workshop about how to make an altar. You can put 
some decoration that you want to put. The most important is to honor our loved ones and to keep the tradition alive. Thank you very much. See you later. Hi, I'm Connie Fetters. I'm part of the Day of the Dead group. And today we are very happy that we're going to share this book by Wolf Earlbrook, Duck, Death, and the Tulip. For a while now, Duck had a feeling. Who are you? Who are, what are you up to creeping along behind me? Oh, good, said Death. You finally noticed me. I am death. Duck was scared stiff, and who could blame him? Have you come to get me? Oh, I've been close by you all your life, just in case. In case of what, said Duck? Oh, in case something happens to you, a nasty cold, an accident, you never know. Are you going to make something happen to me, said Duck? Oh, life takes care of that the cough and the colds and all the other things that happen to you, ducks. Well, like foxes, for example. Oh my gosh, duck tried not to think about that. It gave her goosebumps. Oh, death gave her a friendly smile. Actually, he was nice. If you forgot for a moment who he was, he was really quite nice. Duck said, shall we go down to the pond? Oh, death had been dreading that. 
Before long, Death decided that being in the pond, he has his limits. Forgive me, he said. I really must get away from this damp. Oh, are you cold, Duck said. Shall I warm you a little? Death had never had anybody offer to do that for him before. Duck woke first very early in the morning. Oh, I'm not dead, she thought to herself. She poked Death in the ribs. I'm not dead, she quacked. Isn't that great? Oh, I'm pleased for you, Death said, stretching. And if I died? Well, then I wouldn't have been able to sleep in, Death yawned. That wasn't a very nice thing to say, Duck thought. So, for a while, she refused to speak, but soon she was chattering again. You know, some ducks say that you become an angel and sit on a cloud looking over the earth. Oh, quite possibly. Death rose to his head, his feet. You have the wings already. And, duck said, some ducks say that you're deep in the earth. There's a place where you get roasted if you haven't been good while you've been living. Oh, you ducks come up with some really amazing stories, said Death, but who knows? So you don't know either, said Duck. Death just smiled. After several days, Death said, what shall we do today? Well, let's not go back to the pond. Let's do something really exciting. Oh, Death was relieved because he didn't want to go back to the pond. Shall we climb a tree, he said. They clumbed the tree, and they could see the pond far below. There it lay, so still and so lonely. That's what it will be like when I'm dead, Duck thought, the pond without me. Death could sometimes read minds. When you're dead, the pond will be gone too, at least for you. Are you sure? Duck was astonished. As sure as I can be. Well, that's a comfort, said Duck. I won't have to mourn over it when, when you're dead, Death finished the sentence. He wasn't coy about the subject. Oh, let's climb down, Duck pleaded after a bit. You can start to think strange things when you're in trees. Summer was coming to an end, and they went less and less often to the pond. They sat together in the grass, saying little. When the cool wind ruffled her feathers, Duck felt its chill for the very first time. Ooh, I'm cold, she said one evening. Will you warm me a little? Snowflakes drifted down. Something had happened. Death looked at the duck. She'd stopped breathing. She lay very still. Death stroked a few ruffled feathers back into place. Then he carried her to the great river. He laid her gently on the water and nudged her on her way. For a long time he watched her. When she was lost to sight, he was almost a little moved. But that's life, thought death. And that's the end of our story. Again, Lourdes Valverde from the Museum of Native American History celebrating the Day of the Dead. This time, we will talk about the butterfly legend that is part of the tradition, not in all the country, but in one of the most beautiful states in Mexico. I am talking about Michoacán. And the, uh, this tradition born there because the butterfly is when they arrive. What happened to this? Well, every November in Mexico, the nature joins uh, this colorful tradition of our popular culture, hosting everything 
think in our soul that come back to the earth in the day of the death and the butterflies arrive to Mexico, specifically uh, to Michoacán in one place that is uh, called, uh, let me say, Pascuaro, close to the Pascuaro, the lake of Pascuaro in Michoacán, specifically on the island of Janitzio. Over there, there is uh, a little community called it Purepecha, and over there born this legend, the legend of the butterfly. And then um, the butterfly that travel from Canada to United States and go to Mexico, arrive to, uh, to Hanitzio, uh, this island, and go to the cemetery because we are celebrating the Day of the Dead. And they go over all the flowers over there. And it's an amazing spectacle. Well, the legend said that all these butterflies are the soul of our loved ones that is coming back to us for the Day of the Dead. And then all the people over there celebrate the souls coming to the cemetery and uh, you can watch the little kids. Oh, it's my grandpa coming, coming back to say hello for these two days. And then over there, obviously, is the biosphere, the big biosphere for the butterflies. But for this day, it's amazing because in that week, all the butterflies arrive at that place. And imagine all the souls coming to the cemeteries to celebrate with us uh, these amazing days for celebrate the Day of the Dead. And then some people say, the Purepecha tomb say, that if you open your heart and cross in a little, in a, in a little ship through the lake, you can see the butterfly in the air and you can see the salt in the water. And then it's the soul that is coming back to their places. And it's a little legend, but it's amazing. Because if you are with, with your heart celebrating our loved ones, you can see them. Maybe because you love, you love them very much. But it's amazing. You need to go to see this amazing spectacle, spectacular um, place where all the butterflies arrive. And that's it. This is the legend. You can see the soul in the water, the people reflecting the butterfly, the butterfly over there, and arrive to the cemetery when all of us, all of us are waiting for our loved ones. Well, now, uh, to honor that butterfly, we will make a, a little workshop, making uh, a little butterfly. And you can do it in your house. It's a little, this small butterfly, do you see it? It's amazing, you can make in different ways. And I will show you how to do it. So shortly, this is a piece of paper, normal. A square, you can see it. And then you need to blend it like this. This is step number one. And then in the other way, this. And then for the middle to make these marks, like a rectangle. And then in the other way to Okay, now we have a cross here and a cross here. What we'll do next, take this part, not in the corners, here in the middle, and put it like this. And this. You got it? It's a triangle. I will do it again. 
we take this inside and in the bottom here and then this perfect now we have this and blend this to the top and the other one too here like this okay now put it in the other side take the pick and put it over here do you see it? You, you cross the line this and blend it like this and then open your butterfly and we have another amazing butterfly thank you guys this is all for today bye bye Hi, this is Connie Fetters again from the Museum of Native American History, part of the Dia de los Muertos Festival. Since the beginning of the Bentonville Dia de los Muertos Festival, we have invited Bentonville residents to learn about this rich cultural tradition from Mexico and to enjoy its festivities. I'm Connie Fetters, part of the Dia de los Muertos Festival Committee, and we're coming today from the Museum of Native American History in Bentonville. A key part of Dia de los Muertos is to honor a loved one or a friend who has passed. As part of our festival, we invite community members to share pictures or remembrances of a friend or family member who has died. We place these pictures and remembrances on our community altar. In 2019, we modified our altar so we could virtually display memories of our loved ones. This is a photo of our community altar at the 2019 festival. Besides the pictures and remembrances shared prior to the day of the festival, which became part of our altar, hundreds of people who attended wrote remembrances of the day on the day of the festival and arranged them behind our altar. We really enjoyed sharing the memories of so many special people with their families and friends on that day. We are proud to be able to honor and remember so many lives lived well. And we are looking forward to 2021 when we will be able to celebrate this special day again in person instead of being virtual. Mm -hmm.